How we doing, peeps? So uh, we're going into exponential functions and graphing them, and that's our next unit. So today is all about how to graph them and how to shift them. And it's kind of a review uh, from quadratic functions. So by the end of this video, we're going to be shifting exponential functions. Um, in, the, in the activity that I had you guys uh, use the graphing calculator, what I wanted you guys to come up with was this equation, right? And you graphed and you found this table. And then what I wanted you to notice was that the graph is actually going up here. And here is also doing the same thing. It's starting off and going up like this. Okay? Now these kind of graphs or what we call exponential growth because it's growing over time. The next two with the one-fourth and the one-half are actually decaying. They start high and then they go towards zero. Now what you re have to remember is the fact that um, these will never get to zero. No matter what, they're never going to get to zero, uh, even though they get very, very close to it. And also that these relate to each other, because if we're looking at the table, these tables are exactly the same, just flipped. So if you look at the 4 and the 1 fourth, they're reciprocals of each other. And the tables are the same thing, only they're flipped over this 0, 1. That point is always in uh, the exponential functions because anything to the 0 power, if you remember back to algebra 1, is 1. So that 0 power, that zero point, is always one, no matter what. And it's the same thing with the two to the x and the one half. They are, again, reflected or flipped over that zero one point. So that was uh, where this came in by graphing by hand. In reality, all I need are two points. Zero, one. And then 1, and then 5 to the first power is 5. If you notice, in each one of these, 1, 1 1.5, 1, 2, right here. 1, and then the base. 1, and then the base, 1 half. Okay? 1, 4. 1, 2.5. Now, also with these, this one's growing like this. This one is falling. So where this is 1, 4, this graph is negative 1, 4. And it's the same way with the 1 half. And the 2, if you notice, negative 1, 2, this one and this one are just reflections of each other. So you can look at the 1 half or the 2 as the same, only the 1 half is on the negative realm, the 2 to the x is in the positive realm. And I'll go through another example of that. But I can take those two points, plot them, and graph. Now, what happens is this x-axis, it will never cross that point. And that's what we call an asymptote. It's the line that the graph never crosses. Okay, it 
gets very, very, very close to it, but it never crosses. And that's what an asymptote is. And now there's horizontal and vertical asymptotes. But for Algebra 2, we're just concentrating on the horizontal asymptotes. Um, and so, in general, we're graphing equations in y equals b to the x. Okay, where b is the base, um, and x is now the, in the exponent. Now, we've graphed quadratic functions where we shifted it left, up, down, and then multiplied it. In here, for exponential functions, we're doing the same thing. And the general form is a b to the x minus h plus k. Now, these h, k's, and a's do the same thing that they did for quadratic functions. The h moves it left or right. Now, if you see minus h, it's going to move to the right. If you see plus h, it's going to move to the left. k moves it up or down. Plus k moves up. Minus k moves down. In the A is a special thing. The A is multiplies the Y. Okay? It changes the slope. meaning it's either going to get steeper or it's going to get shallower. Okay, so for these two examples, we're graphing. Okay, one is exponential growth because I can tell this is a, is a number above one. And this is going to be decay because it's a fraction or less than one. So the first thing I'm going to do here with the y equals 3x, I'm going to plot 0, 1. Because I know 0, 1 is always in there. So I'm going to go 0, 1. And then my base, my b is 3. My base of that exponent is 3. So I'm going to plot 1 and then 3. It's always going to be 1 and then that base, that b. Okay? 1 and then 3. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the asymptote. The asymptote starts off at the x-axis, okay? Uh, without any shifts, it's always going to be the x-axis. I always draw it with a squiggly line so I know where it is. And it's different than just a horizontal line. And now I'm going to just graph. It's going to start very, 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 very close and then go up. Now for this one, it's decay. So. I can again start with 0, 1, 0, 1. I could then do 1 and then 1 fourth, but that's not really a great number there, right? A quarter. But with decay, what I can do with decay is I can go into the negative round. Negative 1 and then the base. So negative 1 and then 4, because that's the that's the uh, reciprocal of it. Okay? The asymptote is again the x-axis. So I'm going to draw that wavy line through the x-axis. And then I'm going to graph. Now this one starts close to the asymptote and goes up. This one starts far away and goes down. And for these three examples, I'm doing the same thing. I can plot those same two points and then shift them. So this one-third is just this example one reflected. So I'm going to plot 0, 1, negative 1, 3. I'm going to draw my asymptote and then 
I'm going to graph. Here is example one, only this negative two is an h. So because it's minus two, it's going to be right two. So start off with zero, one, and then one, and then three. But then I'm going to take those two points, and I'm going to shift them right two. So one, two, one, two. Now I haven't moved the asymptote at all, and I'm just going to draw the graph. So if you look at this example, in this example, all the difference is that it takes example one and just shifts it all right to. In this last one, one third to the x minus one, is this problem only that minus one, it's not in an exponent, it's outside. That's a k value. And that k value is going to shift this down one. Now what happens is k affects the asymptote. k is where the asymptote is going to be. Okay. So where normally there's no k, right? That's just zero. That's the x-axis. This one is going to take that asymptote and just take it and move it down one, just like every other point. Now the one third normally starts off at 0, 1, and negative 1, 3. 0, 1, negative 1, 3. All I'm going to do is take this point, move it down 1. This point, move it down 1. And I can graph it. So you see that this and this is just, this is just moved down 1. And this example is not on your sheet, but it's a good thing to know. It has all the shifts, okay? This is my A, this is my H, this is my K. So what you want to start off with, okay, this 3 is my base, okay, because it's 3 to the X, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot that 0, 1, and 1, 3. Those two points are always going to be there. And then, hint, work from the x outward. So that means I'm going to do my h first. Okay. So what that means is this plus 3 is going to move these points over to the left 3. So that's my first shift. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now my H does not affect my asymptote. So my asymptote is still at the x-axis. Now when it says work from the x outward, after I do this shift, then I do my A. So A is my second shift. Okay. And what you have to know about the A, my A multiplies the y values. Okay? What that means is, this is 0, 1. This is uh, negative, or not 0, 1. This is negative 3, 1, because now I shifted it. And this is uh, negative two, three. What happens is this, you're going to multiply the y values. Okay, so instead of negative three, one, now it's going to be negative three, negative two, because I take that negative two and I multiply it by negative one. So this point now is going to be negative three, negative two. I did, I, it doesn't affect the x values, it only affects the y. So, it's going to be down here. Okay. This one 
was negative 2, 3. Now it's going to be negative 2, negative 6. Because it's just going to multiply the x values. Okay, so negative 2, negative 6. So this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. What happens is it flipped, just like uh, in a quadratic where a was negative. Okay, it flipped. All right, uh, but the asymptote didn't change because this is at zero. So zero times anything is zero. Okay, and then my third, uh, third and final shift is my k. K, third shift. So this plus 4 is going to take these points, and if I can graph this, okay, and I'm going to take this asymptote, remember K affects where the asymptote is, this asymptote is going to move up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, actually let me erase all this first, so that we know. So this asymptote was at zero. Now it's going to go one, two, three, four. Okay? So it shifted from the x-axis up four. This point was at negative three, negative two. Now it's going to be at one, two, three, four. Okay, I moved it up four. And this point at negative two, negative six is going to be up 4 also. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that final shift turns out to be like that. And that is the final shift. Those are the m more problematic ones where uh, you have those three shifts. Mostly, it's just H and K. Please complete the back of this sheet and then come find me with any questions.